the N15 King Arthur in detail. Welcome to this rather special video. My new N15 from Hornby has completed its running in period without a fault, and has now had the details fitted. You are seeing her fitted with front steps and cylinder drain cocks. Sadly, the loco won't negotiate curves on my layout with these, so they're only posed here for you to see. I've also fitted lamps, front coupling and crew. The model is so well done that I thought we'd look in detail at the coupling rods, valve gear and a few other items to be found on her. We will then discuss what these did and how they worked. We love our steam locos but how many of us actually appreciate the complexities of these machines and how they achieve such powerful movement and performance? Well with such a model as this we can look at the fine details and go a little deeper. While we watch this beautiful motion working, let's recap on the basics of a steam locomotive of this kind. Water is injected into the boiler via the clack valves, seen here on either side of the boiler just back from the smoke box. More minor pipes near the cab are also involved in this. The clack valve is a non-return valve that is at the beginning of the feed to the delivery pipe of the boiler. The water is heated by the coal fire. The hot gases are passed through tubes on their way to the chimney. The water boils and becomes steam. Steam rises and is collected in the steam dome on the top of the boiler through the regulator valve which the driver uses to control the locomotive speed. The steam then passes through a pipe that is again heated by the fire gases becoming superheated steam. Now this steam is passed into the cylinders causing the pistons to pump but there is a lot more to it than that. The Welshart's valve gear controls just how the steam is used and how the resulting power is transferred to the wheels. Steam is controlled by the piston spindle valve that can be seen highlighted here. It sits on top of the main cylinders. But what's going on here and how does the driver control it? In this excellent animation by Owls Medsec built for Welshart's valve gear we can clearly see what happens. Steam is passed into the cylinder one side at a time producing power strokes in each direction of the piston alternately, while at the same time allowing spent exhaust steam into the blast pipes. The blast pipes are hidden by the smoke deflectors on this model, but if we look at one of my dad's models you can see it hidden behind the smoke deflector. Next up we have number 454 Queen Guinevere. She was built at East. Put a link to this full video in the top right of the screen here. The blast pipe leads into the smoke box and out of the chimney, causing a suction on the fire, in effect drawing the fire through those tubes, causing even more heating of the water and steam. Going back to the piston valve, this is controlled by the spindle highlighted here, and its movement is controlled by the eccentric rod highlighted here and the expansion link, which helps keep everything synchronised. This in turn is controlled by the driver via the locomotive's reverser wheel seen here on the left side of the cab. Highlighted here is the reverser rod from the cab. This passes under the boiler to the opposite side of the loco as well and operates the lifting arms on both sides simultaneously. Often referred to as the steam loco's gears, it's more correctly the cutoff. Back to the piston valve and valve spindle labelled 10 in this diagram. Via the reverser setting and lifting arms, drop links, the valve limits the amount of steam going into the pistons, reducing the amount of steam used, but also the available power. However, full power is only really needed on starting the train, so the cutoff is adjusted for maximum efficiency as a locomotive reaches its required speed, just like selecting fourth or fifth in your car. However, there was an art to this, and many drivers reported listening closely to the sound of the smoke coming out of the funnel and how the loco was performing. The loco told them the setting it needed. Further adjusting the reverser will place the piston valve in mid gear, then on into reverse gears. Once the loco is coasting, another issue arises that is dealt with by the snifting valves. Whee! 
located on this model on top of the smoke box, highlighted here. The function of the snifter valves is a one-way valve that relieves the vacuum created in the cylinders when the loco is coasting. Otherwise, smoke and clinker from the smoke box could be drawn into the cylinders, causing damage. To end with, have a good look at this fine photo of the valve gear of a standard class loco by my good friend Pat. Notice over on the left hand side you can see some cork sticking up. These were oiling points for bearings, and often you'd see the driver going around making sure that these were topped up. The cork would hold the oil in and seal, but if it did fly off, damage to anyone being hit would be minimised. Just in the same way that it was vital to lubricate the valve gear and cranks on the real thing, it's the same for our models. A light oil like Hobby Lube Light Oil or Labal 108 is fine, and only a tiny drop at a time, maybe once every six months. Wear will occur if you don't do it, so please do. I really hope you found this interesting. Certainly there is a lot more to the workings of a steam loco than I have described here, but I hope I've covered some of the basics. Until next time, goodbye for now.